With every great show comes a great cast of characters, many of them varying with different personalities, character traits, and character arcs. Many of these fan favorites tend to develop their own fan bases that will defend these characters like they are their own children. The more popular the character, the larger the fan base will be, and ultimately the more supporters and defenders they'll have. But there's an important phenomenon we need to look into first. In fiction, there are some morally questionable characters that have legions of supporters. Some of these characters have committed numerous crimes against humanity that even the best of lawyers can't defend. But somehow, some way, their fans will go through all the obstacles to try to justify their actions. This delusion from a fan is when one becomes a stan and will do as many mental gymnastics as possible to defend their precious little pookie bear. I can't believe I actually said that out loud, I won't lie. Anyways, let's get into some of these characters, and the first one on the list is Suguru Ghetto. And of course, spoilers in this video. Now let me get this out of the way off rip. This man's fan base is composed of three types of people. People who are fans of his character, people who ship him and Gojo together, and people who just simp for him. And many of these guys will try to defend this guy and say he didn't do anything wrong. He was the best guy around. What about the people he murdered? What so murder? Now I don't want to take away anything from his character arc because Ghetto is one of the most well-written characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. He goes from a guy who does his best to try to defend the weak from curses, but eventually sees that what he's been doing may not even be the best thing for him and his comrades to finally committing to a goal that he believes will be the best for his friends. However, let's talk about this plan. As he was depressed and lonely, Yuki pulls up on him and discusses how it's possible to get rid of the cursed spirits for good. And one of his first ideas is to commit genocide of all non-sorcerers. I know there was build up to this because of his mental state, but it's not even like this was the only potential solution. Then we gotta talk about the unalivings this guy committed, like this whole village of people. Yes, it's sweet that he basically got two daughters out of this, but we neglect the fact that he just destroyed this entire village without warning. I know that they were mistreating sorcerers, but this is just mass deletion. Craziest part is, as soon as he turned into a mass murderer, he was happy. The stress of being the strongest took a great toll on him, but we can't just skip past the fact that he was walking around normally after he murked his own parents because they couldn't be a special exemption. This is the guy y'all defending? Then we can't ignore the fact that he was doing this type of stuff for like 10 years, you know, taking over organizations, building a pseudo cult that was a family, quote unquote, and launching large scale attacks on society. Not to mention how this guy started to rival Frieza with how much he started to use the word monkey. Filthy monkey. Money collecting monkeys. Curse collecting monkeys. Thing but monkeys. Monkeys. Eek monkeys. Oh, by the way, all you ghetto defenders, he will probably be talking to y'all like this too. But I guess it's all fine because he was doing this for a better world for his friends. Wait, hold up. What were his last words again? No matter what anyone tells you. I hate those monkeys. Actually, hold on. One more thing this guy did. Him doing all this evil stuff and getting rocked by Yuta in the end allowed someone else to take over his body and gain an overpowered ability. And now he wants to destroy humanity. Good job, gang. All right, next up we got Aaron Yeager, a man who always stands on business. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, this guy's actions were extremely hard to defend in my opinion, mostly because it was so radical. When season 4 was coming out and this man Aaron was talking about moving forward and destroying the enemy, everyone was hyping it up talking about how they stand with Aaron. At the time, I thought Aaron was low-key crazy trying to destroy everything. All we knew at the time was Aaron wanted to destroy everything except Paradise Island so his friends could be free. This plan makes Aaron look insane, which is kind of the point. You're supposed to see Aaron's resolve to gain freedom for himself and the Eldians, but it's supposed to be such a wild plan and that's why we see his friends trying to stop him except i saw mad people saying that they're crazy for trying to stop them i have friends in real life tell me that aaron was doing the right thing destroying the world fast forward to season four part three part two and yes i'm calling it that we finally see the true intentions of aaron and how he really really wanted to protect his friends and that this massacre was ultimately influenced by him wanting good lives for them now i could be completely misinterpreting the ending i get the whole sacrificing the world for those that he loves theme but let's put this into perspective imagine you're a regular civilian and you wake up one day and start seeing a bunch of giant humans destroying everything. Millions of people were deleted. 80% of humanity was gone in a matter of hours. Just cause some random guy you don't know wanted to protect his friends. <laughs> Now there's a lot more to his plan, like making his friends look like the heroes on ending the Curse of the Titans, but besides his friends gaining longer lives and the Curse of the Titans being lifted, which is fairly important and shouldn't be downplayed, the world eventually turned to war again and the cycle just continued. Looking from a completely outside perspective, millions were trampled and destroyed for like what, 10, 20 people Aaron cared about? But hey, maybe I'm too stupid to understand the actions and the ending. Also, a lot of the I Stand With Aaron fans wanted him to keep going and destroy everything, and my question to y'all is, are y'all crazy? I guess it shows his commitment but isn't it OD? Sure, it's cool if he's your friend doing this, but bro, imagine if you're not his friend and you just get murked for no reason. I don't know, maybe I'm bugging. The next character we got is 
Actually, hold on. Have I told y'all to subscribe yet? Well, if you've enjoyed this video so far and you're new, you might as well subscribe. I'll drop content like this weekly. Anyways, back to the video. Like I was saying, the next character we got is Griffith. Hold on, are there actually people who defend this guy? If you don't know about Griffith, what this guy has done is fairly self-explanatory. Now, I won't try to act like I've read all of Berserk or watched it all. Yes, I know I'm a fraud, so maybe I'm missing something. I vaguely know what happens leading up to the eclipse, and I've seen the actual eclipse itself. But come on, y'all, what are we defending here? Griffith did a lot to achieve his dream of gaining his own kingdom, like selling his body type of stuff, but eventually went down a spiral that led him to being tortured for over a year. He was basically at his lowest point, but this should not justify someone starting a ritual sacrifice sacrificing all of his friends, what he did to Casca, and also marking his best friend and his girlfriend was something that will ensure that he is hunted by demons for the rest of his life, all to gain insane power from evil beings. If you're someone who likes Griffith, you can say why he did it and his logic behind it, but saying what he did was okay and justified is just delusion in my opinion. Someone could be mentally broken and selfish at the same time, and if someone says that Casca enjoyed it in a serious manner, you might need to be locked up. Now I'm gonna start firing off some names that are extremely hard to defend. Basically any celestial dragon is extremely corrupt and i'm not even sure if any of them have fans like who can confidently say that they are a charlo supporter and they love his character we also got Del flamingo who's actually done way too many crimes to count let's name just a few slavery piracy mutilation brainwashing conspiracy blackmailing trafficking abuse of power and more those who actually say dofi did nothing wrong seriously you guys are probably international criminals with an actual bounty on your head the people who also support hisoka and the way he be moving also should be put on some type of list because he moves way too walky to not be put on some sort of fbi I watch. These are 12 year old kids, this couldn't be more obvious. And don't tell me he just likes strong people. He's literally saying I'm getting turned on when a 12 year old looks at him. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like I said before, the schedule for videos should be a bit more normal now that midterms are done. Also, thank y'all so much for the support on the last video. I did not expect to get over 100K on it. Also, we mad close to 10K subscribers and like 10 days ago, we were at 5K. The channel is definitely getting a lot bigger and I just appreciate that you guys are sticking with me and the channel in this journey. With that being said, have a great day and peace out.